Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB today in the arena. It is time to put some new cards in our mono white human deck because that's what it needed. We needed mono white humans to be good, but we've got to try the cards. Like, and this card might be the most important card printed in Aftermath. I'm not positive about that yet, but it, it reads that way. One in a white for a two, two. Each other human gets plus one plus oh and has ward one. It is a human soldier, so. Uh, uh, an excuse, I suppose, to make a human deck and a soldier deck, but I mean, my goodness, the Copper Coat Vanguard is a scary card, in my opinion. And another card that we haven't tried in a mono white human type build yet is Knight Errant of Eos, which came out in March of the Machine. This has Convoke, and when it enters the battlefield, look at your top six. You may reveal two creature cards with mana value X or less from among them. X is the number of creatures that convoked it. Put the revealed cards into hand, then shuffle. The reason I like this one now that the Vanguard is around, because I find that the number you convoke easiest with this is two. Like you play a creature on turn one, you play a creature on turn two, then turn three, you convoke with those and you cast the Knight Errant of Eos. So you need really good two drop creatures to hit. If one of them is Thalia and you already have a Thalia, that's kind of a bad hit. So Intrepid Adversary is good. Guardian of New Benalia though is another card you don't want too many of. They don't really go well on the battlefield in two ofs because you have to discard cards to keep them alive. But Vanguard is the perfect hit. Like if you get two Vanguards off this, then the next turn you play these and they're all warded up and all your creatures are attacking for a ton. That's awesome. So I think that this is the card that is perfect to combine with Knight Aaron of Eos to make this deck a real player. So that's what we're doing today. Mono white humans go smash ladder. Let's dive in. Let the way too aggressive nonsense for my taste begin. Opponent goes first. Gross. But hey, our creatures, they will do things. They will make our opponent miserable. Bloodfell Caves, yes, Rakdos, of course. What else could there be? When do you Thalia the opponent? Immediately! <clears throat> you take that Fable off the table for them. So they don't get that sweet, sweet curve. We'll see if the two life they gain ends up being the difference. Okay, we're coming at you hard and fast. Hopefully no Brotherhood's End. That resolves. Now I have Ward, what you gonna do? Go for the throat, the Copper Coat. Yeah, leaving the Thalia. That can't be too bad for us. I think we are safe from a Brotherhood's End or they wouldn't have used that go for the throat. That card's rude. However, we are covered. We'll just get intrepid about it. Take nine. A delightful trade. A delightful trade. They can't invoke despair yet because of Thalia. They play super expensive Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Who says that card's broken? We laugh at that card and everything it stands for. Let's preserve our adversary. All right, will they hit a Brotherhood's End? Maybe. Maybe they will. Uh, right now we have lethal through one blocker. Uh, we do not have lethal through one removal spell because they kill the adversary. Let's go for it. They get to dig for Brotherhood's End. They discard one. That's not very desperate. I don't like this. I don't think that's it, buddy. Don't think that's it. You go to negative one. Wow. Rakdos dismissed. On the play, we'll need a third land. If we have it, we shall play Magic the Gathering. It will be epic. Do you go for Skrelv or the Initiate? I mean, Initiate, I guess, gives you a chance for great curve out. But if you got, draw a good two drop creature, you want it protected. Let's just Skrelv it up. If Skrelv's going to get in, it's going to be early. Our opponent has raccoons. There are raccoons on my opponent's sleeve. It almost makes me not hate them for having a Troxas avatar. 
poison you. Land! We did it! Okay, so do we peacekeep them or adaline them? I think we adaline them with the Skrelv on the field. Yeah, you got problems. You got big problems, opponent. <laughs> what? <laughs> what you gonna do? Those go for the throats are useless. Ah. <sighs> Sometimes they still try and it's cute. <laughs> I mean, it's the fun to do to them. I've been in their shoes. I hate it. I hate it. We on play. Keep. Initiate. Thalia. Peace keep. Peace keep. You cast nothing, Jon Snow. I think the reason that best of one will always be an aggro fest is because best of one players, but most of them can't handle aggro. Don't know how to do it. And when you play against the ones who do, there's a chance you just get the nut draw anyway and win anyway. So you always have a chance. And in some places you have much better than a chance. You're just insanely favored because your opponent doesn't quite know what they're doing against so much aggression, against unchecked aggression. So yeah, it makes sense. Play aggro decks, play them all the time. You can also win if you only draw two lands, which is kind of wow. Anyway, we get to scry here. So enlist and you and enlist Thalia. And those aren't lands. Okay, this could get interesting. Do we keep playing stuff out? Yeah, because there's still two turns away. Uh, let's go for the adversary. Let's just go for max damage. They could die next turn. But I'm sure if we had played a Peacekeeper this turn, they would be basically dead. They're dead anyway! We did it. Zero spells were cast by my opponent this day. They have a one, two, three curve on the draw. I'm going to keep it. I'm not, I don't feel great about it. It's quite possible I'm supposed to mulligan that for better, because every land we draw is a disaster, but they're on the draw anyway. Gonna get our stuff torn to pieces by cut down and such. All part of the equation. That's a land. That's a disaster. Here's a creature. Kill it. Yep. Opponent two for two on casting removal spells. Good job, opponent. You are the best. And then straight to a trespasser. Woo! This might be a mistake if they have a shieldred, but we don't have many removal spells in our deck. It's really just brutal cathars. So we have to start uh, trying to get this to flip as soon as possible. How many more amazing spot removal spells could they possibly have? Big score. I wonder why they had to think so hard. Let's get a look at this hand. Hmm. Which of these cards to name? How about the shield or the apocalypse? All right. Next turn is going to suck because they're going to cast Sheldred. I'm not casting Hopeful because what we need to do is transform Brutal Cathar, flip it over. And then after that, we need to double spell to flip it back. And that's how we deal with Sheldred. Or we could just rip another Brutal Cathar, and then this looks like a bad play. But this plays around just drawing too many lands. Uh-huh. Holding priority with one land? And they played a land? Oh, ha! <laughs> nice. Good use of your treasure. I appreciate that. All right, Thalia off the top. We just pass, we flip. Because we need to then double spell flip this back over. What do they got in the graveyard? Right now, nothing. So this Takanuma is not doing it. They play it out. All right, you. You. Pass. Gimme. And hopefully we can close this window before they draw anything good. Nice.
Hopefully it's Breach the Multiverse in hand that they can't cast because of the Thalia. All right, we need one more turn. Get there. Get there. Got there. Looked like we were out of that one, huh? When they go removal, removal, trespasser, shielded. Nope. Nope. We found it. On the play, all I do is win, 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 no matter what. Get demonetized, but I never giving up. Bam. Easy. Ha. <laughs> What, your make disappear gonna do something? I don't think not. Easiest game of my life. Man, it feels bad to do this to a control deck. What have I become? What have I become? Initiate Copper Coat. Oh yeah, this card's in our deck. Been a few games. Haven't missed it, just winning anyway. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Cut down. <laughs> Every time, man. Every time. Meta not stale at all. Let's add another year to rotation. People are loving it. It's fine. This is fine. Oh, look. Harvester on the play. That's good. Good card. I will definitely drop the Vanguard because they'll probably just kill it. Hmm, I'll take that. Kind of weird. Maybe they have no respect for the Vanguard yet. Adversary. Well, that's annoying. But we can eventually get rid of that. We got wards on these babies. So they're going to try to do some fight clubby stuff while we're mana screwed. Makes sense. Boom, ba -dum. This is the most banger music. There's too many boards, like too many play boards. But this is the best music. You going to keep attacking? You want to send that adversary? Wow, gutsy. All right. Our opponent's that kind of gamer. They will attack no matter what. All right, land off the top would be awesome. Land off the top would be the bomb. Wow, their draw is insane. All right, got there. So, the harvesters are a pain, but the double ward is really nice. The opponent will probably trade a harvester for a vanguard. We'd much rather they kept attacking us, right? Once we have this down, we take an adversary. We're doing okay. Uh, we could also peacekeep the harvesters. Or just generally lock out the last card of their hand. How big is this? This will be a 5-3. I mean, it's still just trading with whatever. It's kind of a tough call. Maybe I'm supposed to get the Intrepid down just for the lifelink. But these with Ward are really good. The problem is they can just pay with the Harvesters and get it back. But then they do lose a Harvester. This is a tough call. Maybe I'm supposed to double spell because I'm behind. The opponent can kill it, but they have to use a harvester and they have to pay double ward to do it. That basically eats up a huge amount of their turn, so they don't get to keep pressing their board. But if they just let it be, that's a big problem for them too, because we just gain too, so much life. Here it comes. Pay your wards. Pay your taxes. And they have a Glissa. Okay, that needs to be Brutal Cathard. We can't interact with that in combat in any meaningful way. Um, mm, You can go for that Harvester play if you want to. I'd enjoy it. No attacks. That's what we're talking about. So we do this, the opponent is probably going to use their last Harvester on the Cathar, then we play the other one. They have to keep paying double ward, which is good for us. Makes it hard for them to use their turn well. 
Okay, they're playing out land instead of using blood tokens. That's interesting. And go to 10. Goes to nighttime, which is awkward. But I guess this has first strike. So this isn't the worst play. And then we double spell back to day. We can also play this, which is indestructible. Actually, this is really good, right? Really good. I'll engage with the Aglissa. Indestructible. Peacekeepers aren't great when the opponent has no hand. What are the big plays, though? They look like a fight rigging deck that just has drawn nothing but cheap cards. Reach the multiverse, Itali? I don't know which. And they keep playing out their lands instead of using blood tokens. That also screams that they have something huge. All right, I think this is my deck because I don't know anyone else who runs the vine wall in one of the land spots. And that implies breach and Itali, both. So I'm not sure what to name with the peacekeeper. Opponent holding back now. We're still on nighttime for the Brutal Cathar. I don't see an easy way to flip it, but we could just play this out and have a first striker to trade with Glissa if she attacks. And then if the opponent does double spell, they're not gonna double spell. That doesn't make sense. I do wanna start swinging though. We have to be able to block the Glissa, so we have to play a Brutal Cathar. If they top deck a removal spell, we're in bad shape. Adeline, Thalia. Adeline's really good. Doesn't attack well into a Glissa, though. Thalia? Doesn't help. I mean, it does help against Itali, actually. And it's a double spell. Which could be good, depending on how this goes with the Brutal Cathar. There's the block. Seven is a lot. Ow! Yeah, it could all fall apart here if they kill the Brute. All right, now they're discarding lands after they got to seven. Very Italy-ish. Well, hopefully if they draw Breach, the Thalia will get them. Ooh, I hate it. Ooh, that's bad. That's so bad. But we double spell and we take it, right? So it'll be okay. Let's not give that away just yet. Those are lands. Good scries. The flood was waiting somewhere. Seven points, opponent. What you gonna do? What are you gonna do about it? Yeah, keeping the Thalia was a good call. Because now, after this, one, two, flip, take Arc Fiend. When it takes it, the clock is ticking. All right, off the top, opponent, what can you do? Hopefully, it's breached the multiverse right into the Thalia. Attack? That's offering a trade with Thalia. Maybe they did draw breach. I think I'm just going to chump. I don't want to give them the card. And I don't want to give up the Thalia just in case. And I, I know it's close to giving up on lethal there because we have a huge attack, but I'm just not willing to go there. Okay, another Glissa. I guess that makes more sense. Still glad we did it this way. All right, attack all. We get a block. In a block, the opponent takes 10. Let us continue. We could pass and flip this back to a first striker. But we don't have a double spell lined up. I guess we can scry and find out. Okay, we lined up a double spell. The Thalias are actually doing really good and I might lose my one Thalia. They seem to care about it a lot. They almost ran something into it last turn. There's the block. Ooh, 
Give up on one of the peacekeepers. Tee off. Land go. If they hit an Itali, they get a hopeful initiate and they don't get a spell if they hit one because of Thalia. If they breach the multiverse, they can't cast it. Cycle. Land, that's gonna do it, I think. I mean, I don't know if it's over. Block here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Yeah, it's 13 exactly. Perfect. I thought we were gonna lose that one the way that we were behind early. On the draw with a one, two, three, rather a one, two, 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 but there's a three, no problem. More black and red cards. Seems to be a trend. Here's a Harvester. Woohoo. Harvester can take out the Initiate, but we would, I mean, obviously they can take out the Initiate. Can also take out the Vanguard, but last time we played this card, the opponent didn't immediately use their Harvester on it. Let's offer a trade with the Initiate because we still get to push damage this turn. I think the card you least want them to take out is the Guardian because it's good against the removal spells that come up, like cut down. Oh, wow. Okay, maybe they have a trespasser? They have Fable. Okay. I think that's a pretty solid Brutal Cathar target. My opponent lets me keep the Vanguard. We'll see how that goes. There's the Italia in the graveyard. Okay, where's the Thalia? I need the Thalia. Ew, worm, gross. So how to play it? If we transform the Brutal Cathar, then maybe we flip it back. We didn't get a Thalia. We could also play Guardian and the other Vanguard and swing. Yeah, try to be aggressive. I guess that's the way. That is the way. I think I'll just send this Brutal Cathar. Keep our warded Anthem creatures. Opponent takes it. Here's the Guardian. Now do they just reanimate a Talion Curve? On, on the play, on Curve. Oh, Invoke Despair. Invoke Despair, huh? gonna do well it can only kill one so yeah they, they pull back uh there's the thalia we needed that we needed that pretty bad the reflection is still a huge problem gotta be aggressive though it's not like we have good blocks so we gotta hit hard hopeful initiate with plus one plus one counters this can take out the worm but it's really slow I think we've got to go for more Brutal Cathars. I think it's about that simple. Ooh, okay. So they've got some other reanimator shenanigans online. So we could let this die and then cast the other one. And the Thalia. Hold the recruitment officer. Being empty-handed is really risky here, right? Or we could just hold recruitment officer anyway and play Thalia. But having one of these untapped means that we have something to block whatever the reflection does, but the Thalia does that anyway. Let's just do this. Another one. Okay. Okay, dude. But let's see what they do with it. So they can copy it and block with it. And that's so good for them. That is incredibly bad for us. Uh, we attack with the Thalia. They can make a copy and block it. If they double block it, we kill one. Then we lose the Thalia to the other. But then they have no worm. So I guess that's better. 
we attack with the guardian and they make a copy and block it we have to discard just to save our guardian it's a disaster disaster i tell you also if we play the adeline pre-combat the opponent can block one of them with the flesh gorger uh one of the tokens or and uh no wait no they can't because it's human all right it gets the buffs that's a big deal All right, I don't think I want to lose the Thalia. So if the opponent's going to copy Flesh Gorger and block Guardian, I guess I'm okay with that. Brutal Cathar is there. So is an Anthem. Which one do we want? I guess it's got to be the Cathar. We're getting really shut down by Reflection Flesh Gorger. Yep, that's the block. Do they double block? No. So net, we did deal them four. And we got the Adeline on the field. So big turn cycle coming up with Brutal Cathar on top of the library. Here's a tally, but we have a Thalia. Oh God, they get my Brutal Cathar though. Ah! But we have Ward, everything has Ward. Brutal Cathar can't hit anything. Oh, and now I draw Intrepid. So what did they hit? They hit Cruelty, that's not, they can't cast it. And the Brutal Cathar can't target. Nice Itali, nerd. And now they can't use the Reflection. And they scoop! I don't know that for sure that they were dead, but that's still... Wow! <laughs> Vanguard wrecked them. You go first. Uh, let's Grelv and Thalia on the play. Easy peasy. Nothing? Nothing, opponent? Might be soldiers. But soldiers flashing in to block Thalia, no big deal. Hey, we drew the Knight Errant of Eos. I was starting to forget this card was in my deck. We can play it this turn to get two drops. Actually, no, we can play it this turn to get three drops. Oh, that's busted. We take down the shields on Thalia, but I think that's just awesome, right? Because we do this. And we do this. Oh, that's so good. Oh, baby. So uh, I'll take this Adeline and this Intrepid Adversary. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, yeah, let's go, soldiers. Let's rumble. Your big three mana play is the officer. Oh, yeah, let's go. Let's fight. I could play Peacekeeper naming officer and they can't even draw. I can also just play Adeline and go get to work. But I mean, maybe it's just supposed to be the adversaries. I mean, the opponent's gonna have a terrible time blocking these. To combat. Rah, rah, rah. Come at me, soldiers. Let's begin the chumping. The great chumping of our time. And what can they do? Their brutal Cathars aren't gonna hit. They need like two more resolute reinforcements or they need a resolute reinforcements and they need uh, a valley, yeah, a veteran because they need to start pumping everything up to trade and they just can't do it. <laughs> destroyed. Absolutely destroyed. I've played eight games, I haven't lost, and I haven't played mono red. So the sample size is incomplete. So where's the mono red at? Okay, don't know what you are, but 
You're probably in trouble against Thalia. Probably in trouble against Thalia. All right, ramp it up. Ramp it, ramp it, ramp it. Do we peacekeep them or Adeline them? I think we Adeline them. Uh, they could be setting up for a sweeper. What's the sweeper of this deck? What's the sweeper of this deck? I think I need to get an Adeline down first. Must go faster. Okay. More dino. Six lands, not seven. Two mana up, holding priority. That's gotta be the ley line. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. How to play it. Definitely want the peacekeeper. <clears throat> And they go for Leyline, and they go for Adeline. Yep, wasn't gonna stop that. Two herd migrations and an invasion. So let's name herd migration. And let's go with Errant. And whoa, a whiff. Basically a whiff. No anthems. We didn't hit any of the creatures that buff our creatures, but we put six lands on the bottom of our deck. Yeah, the invasion's really good here, too. They get to attack it right away with those Vigilant Stompers. What a nice combo that turned out to be. They're on six. They'll have seven. So we need the... Th yeah, we'll need a Thalia down to keep them from migrating next turn and making a billion 3-3s. Three this could be the game we lose off that whiff from the night. That was just so brutal. Oh, there's the card we needed. All right. Um, hmm. But is it enough? I feel like we even need more now. Another Adeline. I mean, our creatures just run into stuff. The Peacekeeper doesn't want to trade. I guess we got to start here. Five, five to block the four fours coming in. We don't want the Peacekeeper to trade. Yep, we're chilling. Eventually, they'll get there on these migrations. So we just need to build big creatures so the migrations can't get to us. Another invasion. So that sets up the migration just fine. Let's see if the Stompers want to go after it. No, they don't. There's a Vanguard. About time. Let's see how bad the opponent wants to get rid of Thalia. if we can get trades here we want to keep this actually we don't really care about the peacekeeper anymore do we i guess if we're gonna make them pay make them pay all right like this can we pull this one off this looks like a tough game we're gonna have so many three threes what are we gonna need a screll all right so kill the skyclave At least we got some trades. Here comes the herd. Or drag to the bottom. They top decked it. Not cool, man. Not cool. I guess we knew it would happen eventually. The opponent's name is a callback to an ancient ramp deck of greatness, so I do approve. Uh, uh, -huh. uh I guess we do it for two. Yeah, those work. Do we cast one now? No. We're gonna need to pump these creatures up. We're gonna be facing way too many 3-3s. Three All right, that's enough. You got me, I'll take my first L. Rough, rough game.
That ramp deck is really good. Going first, but mulliganing. You, 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 you. Well, just gonna have to draw another land. Well, Dahlia good against blue. Let's go. Hopefully we hit the land. It's all up to the top of the library. Bingo. What you got? Rona's Vortex for bounce. Weird. Depopulate, make disappear, wandering emperor memory deluge. True control, huh? So next turn, they want to hold up a make disappear and they want to get the Thalia. So we could just nuke it and not let them cast the make disappear, but then eventually they cast the depopulate. If I name depopulate, then we try to play around wandering emperor for a while. I mean, I guess we name the sweeper. Yeah. And just try to price it right out of the game. Ooh, the Vanguard's good. But we've got Thalia, and we know that's what they want to counter. Maybe they let this resolve? Mm, we go for Adversary, right? And maybe they let that resolve because they're afraid of land Thalia. Right now, they don't know we don't have a land, so they let it happen. Wow. All right, offer you this Initiate. They let that resolve. See how we play them like a fiddle? Now they're going to hold up Wandering Emperor, and they're going to feel great about it. But I'm going to go for this Thalia, which would keep them from casting it in combat. So they're going to make disappear it, but then they don't have Wandering Emperor up, so we slap them for eight. Would be even better if we drew a land. There's the make disappear. Here's the slap for eight. All right. They are a land from a depopulate. Which means we've got to close the game and we have to do it through a Wandering Emperor. It's going to be hard. They're going for it now. Okay. Just kind of sacrificing the Emperor, which I don't think they had to do if they could find a land. They're going to go to 11. If I draw the land off the top, how close are we? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Ah, oh, so close. All right, so depopulate is a thing. Brutal Cathar can just be a creature. We'd also just pass and not put anything else on the battlefield, but I think we need to. What I really want to try to do is have the vanguards on backup. So we got to play another creature just to make sure. Make him have the land. If we had a Thalia there, it would have been amazing if we had a land any of the last two turns. I think we would have got there. Okay, this is hard mode. Yeah, our deck is drying up a bit. This is not good. Interesting. Why didn't they memory deluge first? They would have gained more life. The vanguards turn off wandering emperors anyway, kinda. I guess they can make a samurai. Fierce retribution paying double ward. I am annoyed. All right, if I had named something different, how could the game have gone differently? Hmm. I hate thinking about that. If I had named the Make Disappear, I would have had the Thalia down, which would have made the Depopulate take another turn, but I didn't have a one turn clock, right? So I don't think I win that. Circuit Mender's an interesting little speed bump choice. All right, I'm a Wrath away from a scoop. And then we'll call it the second loss with the deck. Still haven't played mono red, so I don't feel like my sample size is complete. But I think that's just because the matchmaker protects mono red. 
It's the only, only reasonable solution from a reasonable human. All right, we saw the lethal attack here. Nope, vanquish the horde. All right. On our way, on our way. Please, please find me the red, the red devil. On the play, not a great hand, but it's Thalia. We try Thalia. And we get to play the Vanguard. Did we find it? We found it. This is mono red. They play mono red. Get to see the Vanguard in action and see how Ward 1 works against red. Well, that took their whole turn. Cool. Do we play another Thalia and a Hopeful, or do we play a Vanguard and a Hopeful? I guess the Hopeful isn't very good against the uh, Kumano faces Kakazan. Can't block it. We'll go like this and continue to try to absorb all of their removal. Okay, we ate their lightning strike and we ate their play with fire. That's pretty good. We're flooding. We are definitely flooding now. I do hate that. Am I supposed to go for the adversary and hope they don't have any more burn? I think the vanguard will draw out more burn, so let's go for it. Do I attack? I think I do. Don't really want to trade because we're just running out of resources from the flood. If they use removal here, then maybe the adversary lives. Mechy warfare, whatever. Let's see if we can get some plus one plus one counters on these. Ooh, good draw. Let's get those wards going. I think I'm just going to play this as is, no anthem. Might die. We could definitely lose here to specifically end the festivities, which is a card they still play sometimes. Oh, ho, ho, pay up. Pay up. Love the way that absorbs their entire turn. You gonna come at me? Because I can attack you back for nine. Wow. Gutsy. You're at three, dude. What you gonna do? You got the burn? Can you finish this? I'm at 11. I have a double warded 4-1. I have a certain card in my hand. Soaking Zan. Those are one ones. Pass. Attack all you die. Let's do it. You can't touch my stuff. All right, that wasn't close to our best draw, but it definitely worked. If they had end the festivities, we'd have been demolished, though. And we are back for a quick post-game wrap, and this deck is brutal. Nine and two, a really just kind of quick stomping of ladder, quick rank ups. Copricote Vanguard is amazing as both an anthem effect and a protection effect, and super annoying for opponents to deal with. Of course, all the other white creatures, you know, they do what they do. Knight Aaron of Eos, my first time playing with this card, it whiffed once, and that whiff seemed to cost us the game. Uh, most of the time that won't be the case, so you'll probably win a lot of games. So I really like Knight Errant of Eos, hopefully getting multiple Vanguards, Thalias, Intrepid Adversaries, all of the good stuff. So yeah, this deck, probably a tier one, best of one deck, probably is super competitive. So worth a try. Get out there, try it out, leave your records made up or otherwise in the comments. <laughs> Have fun. And thank you for staying till the end of the video. That is the best thing you can do to help my channel. Top it off. Hit like, hit subscribe. You stayed till the end. You are cool. Coming transmission. Cool kids, come in, cool kids. You're cool so you can hear this. We don't have much time. Join me at... 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 Covert Go Blue HQ. Follow the coordinates on your screen to Covert Go Blue HQ. Covert Go Blue HQ is your ultimate destination for everything CGB. Get your play mats. Get your shark tokens and get the first look at all new merchandise that CGB releases. There's even more that's on the way. 
gear up with the only merch that is 100% certified by the one in best of one at the coolest place for the cool kids, CoolStuffInc.com. Head to CoolStuffInc.com slash CGB. I'll see you at Covert Go Blue HQ. That's Covert Go Blue HQ.